Okay, good morning, everyone. So, my name is Kat Squires, um, and along with Justina Leverich, I teach eighth grade English language arts at the junior high school. As a part of the eighth grade curriculum in the English and social studies classes uh, with Mr. Carpino and Mr. Skimmerhorn, we teach our students about the Holocaust. And this morning, we are honored to have with us two survivors, Mr. and Mrs. Tibor and Noemi Spitz. They are visiting with us to share their first person account of their experience during the Holocaust. We are well aware that these precious opportunities to hear from survivors are vanishing. The significance of this day is not lost on us. We are grateful and honored to be in your presence and thank you so much for being here. For this morning, Mr. Spitz has prepared a presentation and will be sharing his story with us. The presentation and PowerPoint will take roughly 45 minutes, after which we will have time for questions and answers. I would like to remind the audience that all cell phones must be silent, so please take a moment to do so now, double check. Also, eighth grade students, just a reminder that we will give our presenter our respect and our full undivided attention. Please remain quiet throughout the presentation and save your questions for the Q&A. We have nothing but the highest expectations of each of you and we know that you'll stay quiet during this presentation. Once again, thank you Mr. and Mrs. Spitz for your time this morning. We appreciate you and let's give them a round of applause to bring them up. Uh, you see my name here, I'm 93 years old and I survived Holocaust with, um, I was 15 when it was over and my wife was 22 months old, which means that we both made miraculous survivors surviving and I am going to tell you how I did it. Is there a lot of art in the slideshow? Can you hear me? A lot of art is the slideshow and most of it I made. Uh, practically all art is uh, uh, ceramics and, uh, and paintings as well. Uh, if I were 35 years old, I would have been now 113, which means that not too many people come to speak to you of that age. I was only 15, that's why uh, my age allows me to come here. Uh, we came from Europe, here on this map you see in the red, the country was called Czechoslovakia and uh, consisted of two countries, uh, two nations, Czechs and Slovaks, different language, different cultures, different history. And uh, in 1939, it looked still like this. Uh, it was democratic like in the United States. Uh, the town where I was born it was very small, 2,000 people, but it was a county seat. It had a uh, hospital, jail, uh, a few uh, lawyers, notary, public, and so on. Which means that it was a Jewish congregation there. Among those 2,000 people were about 250 Jews. I was born in a Jewish family. Uh, 
and the city was very high in the mountains. Uh, my father was a clergyman, a cantor, something like a rabbi, and my mother was a teacher. And you are in school, you know what teachers do. Uh, my older brother is on the top of the picture, uh, my younger sister next to my father, and I'm on the, the extreme left. Um, I went to ordinary elementary school uh, for five years until I was told that I exceeded my education, was 10 years old and couldn't continue anymore. Uh, in my childhood, uh, most population of the town, uh, little town, where was also high school, was uh, Christian, Protestants as well as Catholics, and it's at about, as you said, 10% of the population was Jewish. <coughs> uh, I don't know how much you know about Jews, but they are about 8,000 million people on this planet and 15 million Jews. It makes one Jew to 530 people on this planet, which means that the minority of minorities minuscule number of people who eventually started both Christianity and, and Islam. Uh, a lot of people in the last 4,000 years, since the times of Abraham and Moses, and then they, King David and so on, and then Jesus tried to wipe out the Jews in competitions and they didn't succeed. 4,000 years is a long uh, history where you accumulate both experience and wisdom and mostly resistance. And uh, it produced a very tiny group of people who were a little bit more, uh, I would say, talented or resistant or uh, daring, which means that they were more successful. Uh, it was a German uh, ideologist first, politician second, and then a chancellor in Germany who wrote a book and he said German people are the most advanced, white, uh, blonde, blue-eyed people are most uh, advanced. The only race they, uh, that deserve to live are blonde, blue-eyed, white people and I'm going to wipe out destroy all the other people on the planet and the first one will be Jews, they are so tiny minority, it would be easy to test on them if I can succeed or not. Unfortunately, uh, uh, he became a Chancellor of Germany, which means Chancellor of Germany means uh, like a Prime Minister or President of the country, very powerful. He became even a dictator because it was an economic crisis and people believe that he can get up them out of it. He did not uh, say immediately how he would do it because he probably even didn't know. But his book was describing that he would first of all wipe out the Jews, secondly he would wipe out uh, murder all Slavic people, like uh, mostly Polish and uh, Russians, whose territories he would repopulate with his own race. And then he would take the rest of the world and wipe out all people who are not uh, to his liking. Uh, in the meantime, he would sterilize people, they wouldn't have children, and he would use them as slave labor and enslave practically all the world. It would be master race, which would be the, the called Aryan uh, German race, and the rest of the world would be just done. He started in 38, 1938, five years after he took over politically, uh, and it was called Kristallnacht, you might have learned about in history. In 1938, he ordered to destroy Jewish synagogues in uh, Germany and Austria uh, arrested 30,000 people who didn't even know why and how and put them in the concentration camps and destroyed thousands of Jewish businesses and because crystal means in German 
uh, also glass, broken glass. It uh, received the name Kristallnacht. And uh, this was an eye-opener that he really means it, that it was not a bluffing politician, that he really wants to do it. But the Jewish population, as I said, was like 0.2% of the population of the world population, very tiny, tiny, tiny. And nobody resisted his ideas to implement into a large scale. In Czechoslovakia, which was very close, uh, it was uh, in, in a country which uh, was bordering Germany, Hitler came with the idea to uh, start his blackmail by saying, if you give me uh, German-speaking minorities in Czechoslovakia, I would uh, promise to be nice and you would have peace in Europe. And that this purple part, uh, you see dark purple, where those minorities, Chamberlain, British Prime Minister, gave him that those territories naturally encouraged a dictator and he took over as then uh, the whole country and Slovakia, where we lived, in the blue part, became a, a ally to Nazi Germany. Which means that we were trapped. On the right hand side is the president of the country, shaking head, hand with Hitler, uh, neighboring a huge superpower at that time already armed. And uh, we, we lived, uh, we, we just became very uncertain fearful, confused, and we didn't know what to do because we felt like between two beasts, uh, the neighbors and, and inside uh, who promised to murder us, to just wipe out, even if people didn't believe that it's so easy to come and kill somebody, which means that it was considered like a, a bluff or an empty politician. Uh, the rhetoric. Uh, however, it started becoming re really true because in I was ten years old. This is a class, my fifth grade. Uh, uh, I was ten years old when uh, I was kicked out of school. I'm on the top with the X over my head. And uh, this was so-called end of my education. We had to wear a yellow stars and everybody would know who we were. We were the outcasts, we were the murderers, poison, poisoning wells, killing children and so on, and which is nothing was true. And people still didn't mind because we were such a tiny minority. Uh, you know, like propaganda and gossips exist and not everyone is denied. Uh, in Slovakia we had to wear the yellow star without text in Czech lands. It was the other one with a name Jude on it meaning Jew. Uh, propaganda was uh, all over the country, in newspapers, radio, television didn't exist yet. Uh, loudspeakers on the streets. And uh, people just either didn't mind, ma ma they were minding their own business and they didn't care that some tiny amount, tiny, tiny fraction of the population had been disadvantaged or robbed or persecuted. But we felt it very badly, we felt abandoned. Uh, confused, didn't know what to do. They ordered us to make a Jewish school. Uh, in those little town of 2,000 people, there were only 24 kids between the age of 6 and 14. And all those kids uh, were fit into one room. But it didn't take long, and a year later, all those kids were deported. and murdered at the arrival because this already Hitler already kept his promise and it was not a bluff, it was not a political rhetoric, it was a real plan 
and technologically Germans were so advanced that they were able to to do what they promised to do or they set themselves to do. 1942, the yellow part of Europe was already under Nazi occupation. Even North Africa, as you can see, the yellow on, on that continent. Uh, those countries in white were so-called neutral, but neutral countries cooperated with Nazis because they paid with gold. They robbed all, all over Europe, or, and uh, mostly from the Jews. And uh, they attacked Soviet Union in 1941, a year before, and already the European part was already almost all taken and they were killing uh, both the Russians, Poles and Jews uh, on a daily basis. Civilians, I mean, not only soldiers. Slovak president, as you see him with a Nazi greeting, uh, joined uh, Nazis, Slovak army was fighting with Germans uh, and uh, all over East as well as in the West fighting Americans or British, French on one side as well as uh, Soviet Union on the, on the East, in the East. In 1942, a Slovak president came with a great idea to move Jewish population, there were 80,000 people, to labor camps. Labor camps abroad in cattle cars squeeze 40 to 50, 60, 70 people in one cattle car and move them to territories conquered by the Germans, to Poland, Soviet Union, which was including Ukraine as well. Uh, this is how the de deportation looked. Uh, orderly people could carry one little luggage in their hands, they were all marked with the stars. They started with 16 years old girls, then uh, military age boys, followed by uh, the rest of the Jewish population, which were old people, females, women, mothers and children. Uh, it looked like uh, very orderly because he, they said that they all moved Jewish population to labor camps. They didn't tell us, uh, Jews, we are going to kill you. And nobody believed that politicians' propaganda was a book somebody published saying we are going to kill you. We are going to uh, let you live, feed your families, work in a factory. It's a war, it's a war effort and so on. Which means that this was a, an idea uh, how to count population, how to fool and deceive the population so that there will be no rewards or, uh, or uh, some resistance. It was already resistance, but it was more political than military or guerrilla, like, like partisans. Uh, on this map you see uh, in blue Slovakia where we live and with the arrow on the top of the blue part uh, bordering Poland is where we lived and where I was born. Auschwitz, which became later very famous as a killing field, as a huge factory where million and a half civilians were murdered, including children and females and old people and everybody, even the POWs were murdered there. Uh, was about one hour by train, 40, 50, maybe something like that, miles from where I was born. I lived for the first 16 years. Uh, he, this map even shows it a little bit better. And this proximity allowed us to meet people who escaped from one of those labor camps. Uh, they were telling us that there were no labor camps. It was a uh, factory where two, one or two thousand people came by train. They were uh, sorted out on the platform, uh, railroad, 
station, a uh, few people, strong young men and women were taken out, the rest were asked to disinfect in showers before they would be sent to labor camps to work. And instead of showers, it was a, a gas chamber where poisonous gas killed them. They were undressed. And then uh, prisoners came and killed and, and burned them in crematoria built for that purpose. Uh, you know, who, who would order crematoria uh, for 10,000 people a day? You know, it must have been, uh, people must have been blind and deaf not to understand what the purpose, that it's a purpose is to do something terrible with humans. Uh, we who try to warn other people, you know, in this picture it is showing like a boy playing with his train and a beast behind him probably would kill him in a few seconds. But people wouldn't believe that Germans would do something like that. They believed that uh, Germany was a very uh, cultural uh, uh, country. They were not more anti-Semitic, uh, anti-Jewish or racially motivating people in Germany than they were anywhere else in the world. But the political party, the Nazis who took over, uh, had a plan and they were also killing Germans because, and Austrians because it was called euthanasia. They wanted to produce a perfect race, which means that somebody who was, whose leg was a little shorter, or cross-eyed, or, or some uh, skin of the color, color of the skin or something, they would take them to hospitals and then would send ashes of the child to, or, or a person to, to the relatives saying, you know, accident, they died. And they killed their own people who were so-called imperfect, emptied uh, mental hospitals, emptied a lot of old people's homes uh, by killing them, by poisoning them, or putting them in those gas chambers. They perfected on those patients. And they were their own country, countrymen. Uh, which means that uh, people believe in reciprocity. You know, if you don't want to eat the lion, lion hungry lion wouldn't eat you. You know, if you are nice to people, they will be nice to you. But in this particular case, this was a bad, terrible mistake. I was 12 years old when those deportations started. And uh, talking to those people, I believe that uh, I'd be dead, you know, if I followed the orders of the government, if I was a lawful citizen and followed the laws and fulfilled my government laws, I mean that, you know, it, it, for a 12 years old, it is a very interesting thought, an interesting, uh, if I call, can call it interesting, but very threatening thing, because we helped those prisoners who escaped from Auschwitz, who told us what was going on there. We had 10 days to hide them. In three, for three days, we couldn't believe what they were telling us. And after we were convinced that what they told us, uh, we started warning other people, and people wouldn't, didn't believe us. Some people did, and we met them after the war, and they said, thank you for saving our lives. Uh, anyway, these are my family members, my mother's parents and sisters, wedding pictures. They were taken to those, uh, out to Auschwitz and to Opel and Sobibor. They were different uh, concentration camps or uh, they called it, they call them extermination camps or death camps. And they were murdered either immediately or uh, when they were young, in, they were dead in a few weeks or months uh, by uh, being starved to death or, uh, or, or diseased or weak or they gave up mentally and they were taken into those gas chambers and murdered regardless of their age. Uh, our father had seven siblings, you know, there were eight kids. And his father, grandfather survived with us, but his seven 
uh, children, his grand grandchildren, many my my many cousins all dead. This is a picture of a wedding in 1941. My mother is on the extreme right. All those people on the left, my mother's family, closest family, sisters, parents, their husbands, uh, husbands of those sisters uh, were murdered. Within a year, they all were dead. Which means that imagine a 12 years old uh, uh, to be uh, exposed to such information. Uh, most people didn't believe it, but I did. Uh, on this picture is again shown the Jewish school because we had to make a Jewish school. We fit all into one room. There were uh, 24 kids between the age of 6 and 14 and none of those ones did, who were deported with parents survived, survived the deportation. As the arrival they were all murdered. Uh, these are youth of the small town, uh, older than 14, uh, you know, in the 15, 16, 17, 20s. None of them survived the war. Within a year, they were all dead. Nobody imagined it. Nobody could believe it. Imagine they would just somebody would tell you, you know, take a bus, trip, we are going to take you to work for a week or two weeks or months somewhere and it, it, it would end up in a situation like life-threatening situations which means that nobody believed in, in it and most people just found out in the gas chamber when they stopped breathing. We were lucky that our father, as a clergyman, was in charge of burials. They didn't want to, nobody would bury a dead Jew, which means that they put him aside for, we, my brother and I were doing the cemetery service, and my mother was a teacher in the school, which temporarily was uh, holding Jewish kids before they were deported. Which means that there was few first months Help, uh, being uh, exempt uh, helped us to uh, get the information I told you which helped us to resist, to uh, be aware of danger and being able to, to cope with it. Uh, this is a reminder to people who don't like the Jews or who are called anti-Semitic if Jesus lived in Slovakia at the time, he would be deported, his, his parents, siblings, and uh, followers, apostles, of the uh, Gospels, uh, writers, uh, and all first Christians, all they will be all uh, murdered by the, by the Nazis. They did not feel any mercy to anybody uh, of that origin. Uh, we had three alternatives. First was to walk into those cattle cars and get killed. Most people didn't know that, but we did. We did. Second was to just refuse to enter those cattle cars and be shot on the spot because there were some militiamen and some soldiers with guns regarding the portation processes and they were just plainly forcing people if somebody couldn't walk or was too weak or too old they just force them push them in beat them up force them into those cattle cars fill them up locked it up and send send them away uh, the third uh, alternative was to somehow escape, to avoid being deported, to avoid being murdered. And we have chosen the third alternative. In 1942, uh, now we know that it took another three years uh, to uh, resist. Uh, you know, three years is almost a thousand days. 
I eventually spent thousand, more than a thousand days and nights on a death row because I knew if they ca caught me, they'd be, I'd be dead. And uh, a lot of people couldn't take it. Their nerves couldn't take it. Their mind couldn't take it. They gave up and uh, either committed suicide or were, uh, were caught by uh, authorities pushed into those cattle cars and it was the end of them. Uh, majority of Jews who lived in Slovakia perished. Uh, we had three, my, my brother was very, two years older, much smarter, much wiser. Uh, he had more schooling than I did my, with my five, five elementary classes. And uh, he said, how to save ourselves, you know, he was, uh, they took all our personal properties, furniture, whoever wanted to walk into our apartment could take it out where they wanted, and they did, which means that it was a brick stove in the kitchen, they couldn't take it out, and we were using wood, it was in high mountains area, wood was really available and uh, charcoal s served as a writing equipment and white walls because furniture was gone, most furniture was gone. Uh, it was a very nice place. Which means that he started uh, thinking of how to save ourselves. First of all, we could have bought uh, false papers pretending to be somebody else, but 2,000 people is a very tiny, uh, uh, down and everybody knew us and uh, we didn't even have money to buy false papers and it was too complicated and we did, couldn't do it. Uh, second way would be to fly away somehow. So there were people who knew how to fly kites and uh, gliders gliders and uh, but it was a war they were shut down very quickly either one army or the other army uh, it didn't make any difference whoever approached the territory would be shut down uh, we could live like fish but we didn't know how to breathe underwater but my brother came to a conclusion that we could live people no people animals forest animals live over hunting seasons they live over snow and ice, they live over bad weather, good weather, and they somehow can survive in a forest, finding food and uh, protecting themselves. And he designed on the walls of the apartment a shelter, how to hide and live long, uh, uh, live for long, uh, in a underground shelter which would be protected, uh, which would be camouflaged and would not be discovered. Uh, we believe that we need to hide, because front line was already closed in 1944, and we believe that uh, uh, we need to uh, survive weeks in the forest. Nobody would think of uh, months or two, more than 200 days nights under the ground, snow fell under the uh, uh, snow, which means that we did not come on that, but we uh, built a very strong shelter uh, in a condition where most Jews would already be gone out of the area. This how the, the, the forest looked. Uh, the area of photography I found on the internet of the area. And if you see the red line, the red uh, arrow on the right, but on the right hand side, this is how we have chosen that. We have, have chosen the uh, area to build the ship. Here, here is a process of the right hand side. Uh, we dug out of soil uh, from the side of a hill, then uh, put those four pillars on, 
in, in the dugout space, crossed it with other beams, we found out those three chunks in the forest. And uh, be a, 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 the, the skeleton in On this picture, it is shown uh, on the side here, but we took a dirt out of the side of the hill. Uh, on the right hand side is a skeleton which we inserted. Can you hear me? Is it right? Because I, I hear some echo. I think it's the battery. I think the battery on the microphone is going. Uh huh. Anyway, is it better like this? Uh, anyway, you see the picture, and I brought the picture even in the real uh, picture of the eye on, 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 the, on the right hand side of this room. Uh, we can cross uh, this. Yeah? Sorry. people searching for us with the orders to find and shoot us because we were escapees from the order uh, we did not follow the law we, we ran away and uh, it was against uh, naturally all laws of the country because we were supposed to be following uh, uh, orders enter the cattle cars and be murdered. This were the laws of the country you were citizens of. But they make sure that they deprived us of citizenship at the, uh, on, at the border so that they be illegally in that matter. We are not any more citizens when crossing the border. Uh, you see a little bit tiny creek on the bottom between those two slopes uh, because this was the in, inside intake of water uh, and whatever came out of us we were able to flush it down the stream and uh, that source of thank you that source of water uh, was only about maybe one foot depending on the rain uh, very very uh, limited source but it naturally my brother sorted out and uh, the area was camouflaged so well the people really stood on the roof of that uh, shelter and they didn't know what was going on they could be a few feet from it and they wouldn't recognize it we were breathing through the hollow stump which you can see on the top of the picture of the roof uh, and inside we were squeezed in six people and uh, as you see crawling in and out on the bottom of, of the painting uh, through a very small hole on all four like, like, like dogs or, or furry animals. And we survived seven months, more than 200 days and nights and not only first months were green grass and better weather protected us and allowed us to collect uh, like food in the forest, berries and mushrooms and so on. But then, this is what happened, snow fell because it was very high in the mountains and uh, there were eight, nine to ten months snow on the ground 
and all the ten summer days, which means that only oat would grow there, uh, fruits, apples wouldn't grow there, it was so cold, and such a short uh, summers. Uh, and uh, this is how it looked in winter time, and those people on horseback naturally had hard time to find us. Uh, then winter progressed and it was the snow was even deeper. They couldn't use dogs to find us, sniff us out. And uh, we somehow made it alive. Who was caught in a forest? This is a painting showing like a, a murder, children, adults, whoever. Uh, those who, the ho the horsemen in the back represent the soldiers. A, a person in the back is revolting, but it doesn't help. There are pregnant females, old people, young people, religious people, based on the garb they, they wear, and non-religious, but it didn't matter uh, to, to Nazis. They were killing, uh, trying to kill everybody to the last person. When the front line came close and the railroad, they ran out of railroad, uh, then uh, they were starting doing those uh, death marches. They were marching people and guards with guns were around them. They were not fed, which means they were weak and who stumbled or became ill or weak. It was shot.